the win against UTSA. And Phil Bennett, North Texas defensive coordinator and a great friend of the show, joins us on 365 Sports. How have you been, Coach? Well, I've been working hard, and uh, nice to see this rain. The heat was, was hot for a while. The For like three months, you had no rain, and now we're getting it. Now it just makes it more muggy, more, more I guess you could say, humidity. We lose him? Really? Coach, you there? Coach, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. All right, so it's so a pretty intriguing opening game. Uh, UTEP uh, in El Paso and you, and, and you guys met last year, hell of a game, 20-17. to 17. Great start. You, you know, um, in my 42, three-year career, I've never started a season with a conference game. So it's a uh, it's first for me. Phil, you guys really ended the season strong last year. Um, how much is the defense do you th- you think so far has built on that end of the season and grown up and getting ready for this conference game to open up? Well, I, I think we're a, a much more mature. I think we uh, we have better depth, uh, but at the same time, we've got some new guys. You know, we lost a couple of good players. And um, I'm interested to see how these young people that we have that are very talented, you know, how they perform. So, you know, our our biggest concern, Paul, is, believe it or not, I think uh, Matt Groves was talking to our AD. He's been at UTEP, and and I've been there, and it's going to be a a large crowd, so we've got to handle that. Coach, at this point when you're just sort of days away from what you've been preparing for for so long, is it just kind of you're in that zone and it's just business as usual or do you feel things start to ramp up? Kind of how does that how does that work behind the scenes? Well, I can tell you after, you know, 43, 44 years, your heart's beating a little bit faster, a little bit of anxiety. Yeah, it's, uh, if it doesn't, it, you know, Craig, you shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's just a unique time. Uh, you have to live it to experience it, and, and it's such a blessing. How good is your front four? And I know that you have a bunch of new faces there. You know, I think we're pretty good, Smoke. Um, we're, we're, we're fast. Uh, we're not tall. Uh, I've got two ends that are six three. My inside guys are about six foot two eighty. But what's what's unique about them is they probably run in the four seven or under range. And um, so we, we can move a little bit. Phil, as someone who's five foot seven, I resent you saying that you're not tall <laughs> and listed four guys that were six feet tall. <laughs> oh. Well, I didn't, I, Paul, I certainly didn't mean that as a slight. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but, but I, but, I, but I don't want to play, I don't want you to play a defensive tackle for me. No, no I, nobody does. <laughs> you have Katie Davis, and of course, we know the story during the offseason off about getting him back as well. How good are your linebacking core with him as the anchor? You know, uh, Bob Davies is going to do our game on uh, the television, and I told Bob this. I've got four linebackers that can play anywhere I've ever coached. So, uh, I, I think that's, you know, I've, I've coached some good players. And um, I think I've got four guys that really have a chance, you know, to possibly play at the next level. Phil Bennett, North Texas defensive coordinator with us, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. High school football starts tonight in Texas. And I know you have the history of that. Your brother's coached, of course. Jerry won the state championship at Jefferson. Um what are your what what was, what's a memory or two of you in high school football? Well, it's the beginning. I mean, uh, you know, of course you you were around. You know, back I played in Marshall and Marshall and Longview and Texarkana and Nacogdoches, Tyler Lee and John Tyler. I mean, they called it the Little Southwest Conference, and uh, it, it was it, it was everything, the whole town. But you know, I'm excited about this game tonight. I've got a special interest. You know, Brody Tron is the defensive coordinator at Rockwall Heath. Mm-hmm. And Reed Heim, who was our GA at Baylor, is the head coach at Geyer. So uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of interest in this game tonight. By the way, uh, Heath plays midway down here in Waco. I think it's like week three or four, so we'll see him. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. 
how many do you, okay, this is probably, how many people are on your coach? Do you know how many people are on your exact coaching tree? Just you. I, I don't, I don't, but, uh, uh, you know, I know it's, it's, it's quite large. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I think I've had a text from most of them. I don't know. I would say, uh, you know, Paul, I don't even know. I well in the fifties, sixties, maybe, uh, I, I've had a lot of guys that have done awfully well that started off with it. Phil, has there ever been somebody that turned out to be, uh, uh, that ever came up to you and said, initially, you didn't think they could make it as a coach or they just, it wasn't working out and that you talked them into staying in the profession and then they, of course, just blossomed? You, you know, um, I, I can remember, and this was uh, at, a, at a time uh I was also a young coach. I had a I had a guy that that uh, he didn't know been great, and then you turn right around and you play in your backyard with SMU. This this is a spicy start to your schedule. Yeah, it is. It's a you know it's a start that we felt like would get really measure us from from the get go, and uh, we think you know the thing SMU has has you know the last three or four years have been very competitive. Uh, Red has come in. Uh, they've got the same quarterback who's a Wakefield guy. And uh, But I promise you, I haven't even thought about SMU. I, I have a lot of respect for Dana Demel. You know, Dana was at Kansas State when we, we used to go against him. I was even I even brought out the, the 14 and 16 game, Baylor game, just to watch him again to see his thoughts. Mm-hmm. Well, it's always a connect. Isn't that crazy? That's the thing about games, coaching, whatever. You, there's always a network or connection somewhere from where you have been or where somebody else has gone. It, it, the the way past each other, you you uh, and, and you know, like I said, you, you I have such respect for him because of what he did with Coach Snyder there. I I was actually the defensive coordinator at Iowa State. When he played at Kansas State, he was a hell of an offensive tackle also. Phil, the uh, the way college football's had this offseason, of, I don't know if the word is turmoil or it's just been so rambunctious with so many stories other than the game itself. How healthy is it now just that games will start to be played? You know, I was listening the other day to Lou Holtz, and he said, I'm hoping and praying once we get these these games going, we will talk about the game and the players, and not about leagues and 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 who's in, who's out, and and the uh, transfer of other players. But you know, even right now, David, you got kids. I got hit like with four kids today that signed with a school that are in the portal as freshmen. Now, how crazy is that? You have four. No, we, we oh. had people contact us. And games haven't, in the portal. G- games haven't even been played yet. No, no, no. Yeah, that's going to be mean, a slippery slope to deal with, though, right? I mean, if this kid is already unhappy where they are, are they going to be happy anywhere? Like, there's there's so many questions that just come out of that. You know, it, it's just uh, – it's worrisome in the fact if they don't get a, a time and a regulation – you know, what are we teaching these kids? You know, as soon as you have a problem, you leave. I mean, that's 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 not a good thing to, to start and continue. I don't know if there's anything in the game of football you haven't seen. Is there? How often when you watch film now, is there something that you have not seen in your 40 years or so of coaching? You know, I tell my players every day, if I'm not learning something, I'll quit. Uh you know, I have seen most of it, but at the same time, uh, the minds of young coaches and, and, you know, you think about it, Smokey, back in the days where, where hey, there was a tight end, two running backs, and, and two wide outs, mm-hmm. and then what it's evolved to. And uh, now with, with what Art did and other people did with Tempo, uh, and I laugh, and you can remember this, we're one of the few – when the wishbone was created, what it did for Alabama, what it did, you know, for University of Texas, what it did for A and M, and now it sort of passed. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, I still see some things. You know, there's a lot of things going on right now with unbalance 
a lot of people are doing things with an unbalanced formation, creating uh, uh, defenses, having to slide and recount. Uh, I think Baylor, with their stretch game, Jeff Grimes was at our camp with his son, and we were talking about how they do things, and it was unique, very intriguing to me how he does his offense. So uh, you're, you're always learning. Phil, the spread offense, which is now even infiltrated into the NFL, went from the high school level to the college level to the NFL level. Has there ever been anything else that the high school level did that went upwards like the spread? You know, I don't think so. Because, um, you, you know, one of the things about the NFL is, is their big concern, you know, they don't have hashes. Mm -hmm. So it's really a different, you know, when I, that year I was doing some consulting, it's a different game. And when the game is played in the middle of the field, the whole game, that spread is deadly because you have to tackle in space, you have to cover in space, and it creates, and especially, let's be honest, they won't let you touch a receiver. So, so it, it, the people wonder why corners, why Xavier Howard's making 30 million a year, that's why. Is there a rule in football that actually, Helps the defense? You know, they thought they put this big rule in that they couldn't crack black, you know, yeah. crack us or cut, cut us below the, the knees. You know, I, I'm not sure that's going to affect, you know, and help the defense. You know, I, I think it's a showmanship game. And I think, you know, people want to see scoring. Uh, and, and, you know, I think that, that, uh, they do everything, and I, I'm not crying about it, but it's the truth. I mean, they want to see the offense score points. And and if you're coaching defense, um, you're behind the eight ball a little bit on a lot of things. Do you ever wake, <laughs> wake up in the morning and go, I just wish I could coach against the wishbone for one game? <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was a pit, I did. and I did, uh, it, That's not easy either because they <laughs> may – you know, it's, it, it's everything – that you do, you know, is, is a teaching factor. And, I, you know, one of the things I, te I tell our coaches, I said, if we get beat and it's, it's because they, they executed better than us, I can live with that. But what you can't do, you can't give up explosion plays, run a pass where you miss a line, you miss a call, and you don't perform. And now I can tell you something. I remember Paul Johnson when he was at Georgia Tech he could make a lot of defenses look bad just by doing the stuff he did with the with the bone. Was he also at Navy first? Yes, he was. Yeah, he, he was. was. Absolutely. He, he was. So you, he, you, he was. Hey, hey, David. He was my first game as a head coach at SMU, and that year <laughs> they went. I think they went ten and one, <laughs> and we had Tate Wallace was my quarterback, who was really a tight end. We went right down the field and scored. And, and I think we pissed him off because he went <laughs> off. <laughs> when you were at Iowa State, that was when Switzer won a national title, I think, in 85 at Oklahoma. What, sure did. Was that the best wishbone talent and precision you ever saw? Ever. Listen, everybody that – I can still give you a name. You can look this up. In the first ever – ESPN night game, Paul McGuire at Iowa State, ain't Jack Trice Stadium. They beat us on the last play of the game, 12 to 10. This was when Bosworth, Casillas, uh, uh, Spencer, uh, the guy that's been uh, announcer now, but Rhymes, all those people. And the next year, I remember telling my head coach, I said, hey, Mac Brown was the offensive coordinator for Barry. The next year, we go to Oklahoma, and I tell our head coach, I said, we're ready. We're more. We're going to beat them. We're, and we were getting better. Well, the week before, Miami had knocked Troy Aikman out of the game. <laughs> and guess who they brought out on me? Jamel Holloway. And he almost killed the schooners, the horses. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I remember my head coach. I was a young know-it-all. He walked down to me and said, well, he said, what do you got to say for yourself, guru? And I couldn't say, well, I mean, 
and it was about 500 degrees. I was like a tomato, and they never stopped scoring. You want me to remember the score? You want me to remind you what it was? I know it. I, was it in the 60s? 59 to 14. That wasn't bad. 59. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. Hey, hey, well, you, at will. You, you held them to a field goal one time. <laughs> I will tell you this. When they nobody had heard uh, of Demel Holloway. No, I mean he was he was like five foot eight and and fastest guy on the field. They had what Lot Mildren back in the day. They had Lot. Yeah. Um, golly, I mean Steve Davis Billy was a Pimp. magician. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I mean I'm talking about the quarterbacks though. Steve, oh, quarterback oh. Steve Davis. You know Jack Mildren. Yep. You know it was. Um, it's amazing. The, at that time, of course, that's my era. You had Worcester, who just passed, and you had Coach Roll, of course, my coach, Emmy Ballard, yep. started it there. And then you had, when Alabama went to the wishbone, Coach Bryant, I mean, that's when they really started. Wilbur Jackson, and, and they became a, a, a national champion. So, Crazy. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, did. You mentioned space earlier about how space is so important, and that's something Art used to mention. That wasn't that really the key to his offense. Yeah, yeah. The spacing, you know, uh, you know, two things with his offense. He could create a matchup as good as anybody. I mean, he he never got so um, ate up with saying, "Hey, he's an inside guy. He's an outside guy." I remember. I still laugh with Brent Venables. We would go five wide, and then we would put Goodley at tailback and run the zone and just run it right down his throat. He would bring all these nickel and dime people in. Then he'd do it with Corey uh, Coleman. I mean, you could never zero in on on where – and we would be – Gary Patterson, good coach. But Gary Patterson used to press our corners – our wide receivers who would be three or four yards almost out of bounds. They would press them. And Art would just laugh. So it, it, it was it, – defending him was truly a learning offense. Well, Coach, kind of putting all that together, what are your thoughts on Brent Venables being a first-time head coach now at Oklahoma? And uh, Jeff Levy, obviously, is offensive coordinator. How do you think that combination is going to work out? Well, I, I'm definitely a Jeff Levy fan. After this deal that happened there, I'm, I'm not much of a Venables fan, so that's all I must say. Okay. Oh. I mean, <laughs> if, if there's a loyalty factor in this business, you don't forget it. You know, I, I'm just uh, – I know too much about the situation and not – just don't want to go there. I, I, I'm for Jeff, but I, I don't know how it's going to play out, to be truthful with you. Uh Phil, one more thing. As you're about to open the season with the game at UTEP for UNT, Coach Seth Luttrell, head coach, you guys have done a really good job what you turned around last year. Um, you were out of coaching for what was it? One year? Three years. Three, three, three years. years. Three years. Yeah. Did, were you, three years. Were you, I know you had back surgery. You had to go through some things as well. But were you miserable when you weren't coaching? You know, I wasn't miserable. No. I, I, that would be a – now – one of the things, there was an emptiness that, you know, my wife always tells me around July I change. And, and, and I guess it's just a, it's a seasonal thing. But uh, I wasn't miserable. Mm. Uh, but, but I didn't, uh, there was some something lacking. And that's one of the things I've enjoyed here. You know, I like the camaraderie of the coaches. I like the camaraderie of our players. Um, I, it's just a feeling if, and you know this, David, all of you, you've been around it. I mean, what coaches get to do together and what they get to, to live with and sometimes through, uh, it's a very bonding experience. Absolutely. And uh, I always would like to have you as somebody that uh, is by someone's side, man. You're amazing. We appreciate it. The chat room likes you. Phil Bennett, North Texas defensive coordinator with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Good luck in the opening game. Hope to have you on more often as well as we get into the season as well. Well, I appreciate appreciate you guys. And as I always tell you, I love what you do for all of football, uh, high school, college, and pros. You're fun to listen to. 
You were a part of some of the earlier shows, and I don't know if you know this because you've been kind of busy, but our show has exploded nationally, coast to coast. The Texas OU store, UCLA, USC, obviously then sent another level of it. But we appreciate you because you were there with us from day one. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Phil Bye-bye. Bennett, defensive coordinator. North Texas UTEP, that's a heck of a nice opener at El Paso, in El Paso, 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Um, 